In the 1800s, the Russian Empire was ruled by a czar or king. Czars had controlled Russia for several hundred years. Czarist Russia had a rigid social structure. A few privileged people lived lives of luxury, but the majority struggled just to get by. A third of all Russians were serfs, peasants forced to work the land for masters who controlled their lives. Life in Russia had been this way for centuries. But in the 1800s, people were growing increasingly dissatisfied. Most czars ruled as firm autocrats. They imposed their will on their subjects and showed little concern for people's needs. But sometimes, the czars had to make changes. In 1861, under pressure from all sides, Tsar Alexander II freed the serfs. But the action backfired. No longer forced to work the land, many former serfs moved to the city to work in factories. Instead of finding prosperity, they found overcrowding, poverty, and disease. The Tsar's reform hadn't made the people happier. It made them more discontent. When Alexander's son and grandson succeeded to the throne, they abandoned his reforms and returned to the policy of harsh repression. The Tsars became increasingly unpopular and opposition to the czarist regime continued to grow. Then, in 1904, war broke out between Russia and Japan. Both nations wanted to gain control of Manchuria and Korea in East Asia. Russia believed it could easily defeat the Japanese. At the same time, the Russian government saw the war as an opportunity to rally support around the Tsar and distract Russians from their dissatisfaction with things at home. But the Russians greatly underestimated Japan's military strength. During the Russo-Japanese War, the Russians suffered defeat after defeat. In 1905, Japan destroyed the entire Russian Baltic fleet Many people blamed the Tsar, Nicholas II, for the humiliating losses. Newspapers and revolutionary leaflets spread the news of the military disasters and fanned pent-up discontent created by years of oppression. The workers called a general strike, protesters flooded the streets, and liberals demanded a constitution. Amid the turmoil, on January 22, 1905, a young priest led a large group of workers in a peaceful march to the Winter Palace. Carrying religious icons, they planned to present a petition to the Tsar. But Nicholas II called in his troops. Tsarist soldiers opened fire on the crowd, killing more than a hundred innocent people and wounding several hundred more. This event, known as Bloody Sunday, sparked the Russian Revolution of 1905. For months, Russia was torn by strikes, riots, mutinies, and political assassinations. Nicholas feared that the violence would topple his empire. Toward the end of 1905, he issued the October Manifesto, in this document, he promised basic civil liberties. He also announced the formation of a national legislature, or Duma, that would have to approve all new laws. The first Duma met the following year. It did not take long for delegates to learn that, despite promised reforms, Nicholas II was still in charge. After 10 weeks, Nicholas simply dissolved the Duma because the majority of those elected had opposed him. Nicholas had survived the revolution of 1905, but the people's anger didn't disappear. And in just a few short years, the people would rise again, and the Tsar's regime and his empire would come crashing down. 
In 1905, what international conflict caused the Russian people to become more discontent with Tsarist rule? A. World War I B. Russo-Japanese War C. Russo-Turkish War D. Bloody Sunday The October Manifesto of 1905 A. Freed Russian serfs B. Declared war on China C. Announced the creation of a national legislature D. Disbanded the Duma What were the causes of the Russian Revolution of 1905? 